DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, Newmark, and DJ and TV Insiders. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Running Your DJ Business with KC and Brian B. How are we doing, Brian? Good. Good to see you, man. I feel like I haven't seen you in a while, but I actually have. Saw you last week. That's right. We or this, this week. week. This week, Jeez. yeah. Running together. So welcome back to the America. Thank you, man. Thank the you. English and quality beef and baseball and everything else so so for anybody tuning in for the first time tell them where you've been in your worldwide uh travels um so i uh, went to a dj show uh out in birmingham england uh called the pro mobile conference it's it's very similar to the show that we went to this week as far as um amount of people there was about 120 people from all over the uk although there was a couple of people from uh both Let's see, Ireland and Scotland. Some, a guy yeah. in a kilt. We had a DJ in a kilt show up and roll through, which is nice. Um, it's probably happened here too. Yeah. So it's and then I, I had a wedding in Italy. So I had about a week to kill um, between that show and that. So I literally was like, I'm going to call as many DJs as I know or uh, reach out to Facebook land and see who, if anybody in this uh, scene can hook me up with some gigs. And so I landed two of three and uh, got to extend my stay. I needed to be in Rome on Saturday and the show ended on Monday. So I had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday <clears throat> to kill, Friday to kill, so the four days. Okay. So I went to Brussels, did a bar gig. Um, I went to uh, Frankfurt. I wasn't able to land anything, so it just was a free day. And, okay. uh, and then I went to Vienna. I was supposed to do a school dance. My DJ friend there, had, which was going to be awkward anyways, I was kind of concerned, like, how am I going to make announcements and crowd hype in Austrian because I don't know how to speak it. <laughs> so um, gotcha. he had the date wrong. You didn't learn how to say, like, clap your hands or scream in Austrian? I, I had Google Translate ready to go. So okay. I, was, uh, I, I was ready to go with that. But anyway, the guy got the date wrong or I don't know what happened. I think there was just a loss in translation. It's like, oh, I thought it was tomorrow you were coming. I'm like, no, 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 dude, it's today. I'm leaving tomorrow. So anyway, I stayed with a, um, an Airbnb host who uh, essentially got me a bar gig. <laughs> she, okay. like, her favorite bar was called Vinyl. It's a separate story in itself, so I won't bother with the details. But then went down to um, Italy for a wedding, which was interesting, doing a wedding in a different country uh, for 30 people. It was a destination wow, wedding. 30 people. 30 people. And I had those folks dance until for four hours straight. I wow. thought, oh, they're going to peter out. You know, nope, nope. <clears throat> I think it's – and I think – because the fact that it was so small, I think it actually worked to my advantage because everybody wanted to make sure it was a great party for the for the okay. bride and groom. And so they stayed around. Now, were the bride and groom American or they were okay. actually one was a Chicago uh, photographer. Very they were both good. from a lot of conglomerate from Chicago, and actually not Chicago. It was like a suburb. Um, okay. The priest yeah. uh, who married them came in. He was a, a priest at um, DePaul University. Okay. Uh, so there was. I don't know what the city was, but they were living in those outskirts areas of, of Chicago. Right. Um, and then literally the next day after the wedding, I took off and went to the Engage Conference, which is a, another sh uh, show. But that's for like the um, wedding industry at large, but uh, right. a really niche luxury market. High and end, yeah. Um, yeah, so I've been going to that for a while. And I'm the, I guess, uh, main sessions DJ and voice of God 
if you will. Okay. And uh, that was interesting. I've never been to that part of Italy before. I've been three now, times. Was that all now. in English? Was it, it game all in English? It was, yeah, all okay. in English. Um, but Sardinia is kind of like the Hamptons is to New York, I guess is the best way to describe okay. it. It's like where the hoity toity people go. <clears throat> and um, they weren't even open. It wasn't even the season for them. They usually don't start till like middle of May. So they opened up specifically for this conference. Okay. And uh, it's interesting. It was kind of. Um, uh, to see that the workers were getting like an extra couple weeks of pay because we were there. We, we, we right. literally were the only people at this resort and uh, it was good. It was, I feel like I came back refreshed with a lot of knowledge um, as far as going to those two shows. And then straight from there, I went home for one day uh, and then went to Milwaukee and met you there. Yeah. The capper, huh? Yeah. The capper. Milwaukee, capper. Wisconsin. Home of yeah. the Fonz, Laverne and Shirley. Right. There and uh, today, yep. in Florida. So I have a grand opening tomorrow for a, 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 a new store. That's actually it's a rebrand, I should say. Okay. And then I do that tomorrow. So Toys R Us is going to be called what now? Yeah. No, <laughs> and then I have to be home <laughs> Saturday. I have a wedding in, uh, in New York on Saturday, which is always tricky going home on the day of a wedding. Got it. Uh, but I feel like I'm giving myself enough margin uh, to make okay. it happen. So, and Good. then I'm home for three weeks. So wow. I'm glad. Three My wife's weeks. glad. So, your wife's yeah. gonna be like, "Who are you?" Yeah, but it was interesting to see like some of the differences between DJs in the UK, DJs in Italy, uh, just the differences in music. You know, here I am trying to like um, bridge the gap there between mm -hmm. all of that and. Uh, it was interesting. It was interesting to kind of see what people play and, and how it all works. I did find a couple hacks, which okay. is um, uh, not Spotify. Um, what is it? Uh, Shazam. Okay. You can actually find what people are Shazamming in certain countries or That's cities for that matter. So uh, it was a good way to kind of gauge. And honestly, like English music carries over quite, quite well yeah. to all you know, bridges everything, but there are so certain heard of Bruno specific Mars songs. And, uh, Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That yodeling song. Yeah. That one about the Walmart kid, you know, they turned that into right. a track, like yeah. a techno track. It is the rage <clears throat> still. I haven't really yeah. tried it in America yet. So I'm curious if it will go over, but, uh, I bet somebody will mix it in and out of prom season. Yeah. But so. out there, everyone was uh, all about it. And I'm like, do they even know Walmart? <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I don't know. So, uh, anyway, well, do we know what Gangnam Style is? But obviously, that's true. You're from uh, was it China or Korea or? <laughs> yeah, I think it was Korea. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Still the number one most downloaded, um, or number one most watched music video on YouTube. Is it still? Yep. Still wow. is crazy, okay. huh? Yeah. yeah. Yikes. What so. Is the <laughs> So um, my weeks have not been nearly as exciting as yours. Um, have you been in wedding season? Uh, we're getting there. We're actually just starting it now. Um, photography wise, we're a little bit stronger than we are DJ wise, and floral starting to kick in. <clears throat> as just like in New York and most of, I'd say everything. What let's say east of the Mississippi, um, it's gone from like forty degrees here, maybe thirty degrees to. 80 and then back down to 40 so yeah I mean, two weeks ago john young and i were talking and he had snow by him <coughs> and like a foot of it they were closing down schools and stuff yeah so it's been a, it's been a crazy summer or crazy spring yeah my so, wife was saying it was like 85 degrees today in new york so uh yeah it uh, was warm here yesterday then it rained like crazy we had um in some areas of chicago like small like fist sized uh, golf ball sized hail coming down. So my right. car uh, missed that, thank God. And so uh, <laughs> I don't have to do it, but I know others that that paid the price. So sure. So yeah, the good Lord was looking out for my uh, my little black beauty. So nice. Nice. <clears throat> so that was that. So um today's topic is kind of mine and I kind of want to talk about it more and and John made it a little bit more generic and I actually think that it's better which is you know as I'm as I'm uh planning the marquee show I keep hearing DJs that say you know I'd like to do that but I can't because of this reason or that reason and and more often than not I keep finding that this track is just keep 
giving me excuses why they can't do this or they can't do that and take away the marquee show for a minute. But <clears throat> it's I'm just blown away by how we talk ourselves out of things so often that they can't or they won't or they don't. And it, to me, it's just so anticlimactic and it is so negative. And, and I'll use this week, you know, this was the 10th anniversary of Midwest DJs live. Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> you know, most people would have said, you know, you can't pull off a show in Minnes in, uh, Mi in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. No one's going to come to it. No one's going to do it. But you know what? I have to give props. The guys at Midwest DJs Live did a really, really great job. Yeah. Um, I counted the tables and there were 14 round tables in that seminar room. <clears throat> and. You know, during Mike's seminar, during yours, I think every seat was taken. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that they're right about the 140-ish um, number, you know, which I thought was absolutely terrific. And I've been with them, I think this is my fourth year with them in some capacity from speaking or being with ADJA or um, this year exhibiting our show there and such. But, you know, I, I give them a lot of credit. And, and uh, even going to that, I thought that they did a great job with education. I thought that the place, the the host hotel was very, very nice. You know, my only criticism, which has nothing to do with them is wasn't crazy about the food in the casino or in the hotel slash casino. And I'm so used to Chicago being smoke free that, that the smoke yeah. in a yeah. casino is just, you don't really notice it. And maybe yeah. it was just, again, you and I both DJed in bars at one time where smoking, you didn't even need a fog machine half the time. No, no you know? doubt. And I was, I was I mean, doing a a bar gig in yeah. Europe. Yeah, uh, and it was literally, I, I would guess, five hundred square feet, and right. they smoke the unfiltered cigarettes still. Oh, okay. And I smelled like a smokestack, and then, like I had a cough for the next two days, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I cannot believe they still do this." Like I, well, can't, I, I can't. And I was DJing back in those days when it was still. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, like ten years. Ago right. and they were smoking, so yeah. When I smelt it in that casino, it was oof. having to walk to the show from there was not that was the only uh, was one of the few negatives for sure. I agree with you on that. Right. Well, it's interesting because I got a whole bunch of people that said, you know, I'd love to come to your show, but I can't. And the interesting thing about it was, if they can't because of the fact that they already have previous plans, that their wife and them are renting a cabin or going on vacation, I, I totally understand that. But it's just amazing where they said, but I, I can't be away from my office and I, can, and I can't get off time off of work from my full time job and I can't afford it. And all I kept thinking is, can you afford not to? And, mm. and forget about marquee. Let's just talk about any self-improvement thing or any choices that we make in life. The question becomes, can you really afford not to? OK, mm -hmm. at some point, you just have to put your neck out there and you have to put, you know, not just dip your toe in, but you have to be all in, you know, and I shared with you, like, I am really digging down deep to make my show happen. And um, I'm not going to lie, like I'm I'm uncomfortable with the amount of money that I have invested in it, but I believe that this is the time and the place and that our industry is ready for a show like this. And so we'll find out, you know, I may be eating ramen noodles from July 11th through Christmas, but <clears throat> the fact of the matter is I wasn't going to have anybody say I can't do it. Right. I prefer when people tell me I can't do something because then I find a way around it. And so for all of you that say, I can't, I can't, it's kind of like when someone says, I try, I'll try. I can't yeah. stand that tone. I, I, that's the worst phrase in the world. Other than the word gig. No, um, no, because when someone says somebody told me once when I said to them, I said, um, I'll try to do it or I'll try to be there or whatever. And they said, don't try to be there. Trying is failing with honor. And mm -hmm. that, that has stuck with me ever since because it's so true, because when somebody tells you they're going to try to do something, it's their polite way of saying no. So that you don't, you know, you don't have to reject to the other person. Right. But if you say, where were you? You can say, well, I told you I would try. I never told you that I would be there. So right. as a result of that, nobody can get upset with you and say, well, you know, uh, you know, 
uh, I, I never said I would. You can't be mad at me because I never said that I'd be there. I said that I would try to. And and that to me is just one of those like lame cop outs personally. Mm-hmm. So so that's all. Mm. Um, and and this was this is it. Like personally, I don't think that there's any reason that somebody can't go to a DJ show or can't go to a Bill Herman workshop or can't, you can't do all of them that I agree with, but you know what, what they can do is they can watch a show like ours. It costs them nothing except for their time. Mm -hmm. You know what they can do? They can go to the library even and buy a book on marketing or a book on sales or a book on building their business. I just, it really sincerely bothers me when I hear people constantly tell me they can't. Right. So, you know, and that's kind of where, Originally, I wanted it to be about it's not that you can't a lot of people say they can't afford or they can't get the time off. Or they can't. And I started to tell John originally, I wanted to do the show about how you can't afford not to mm-hmm. go to DJ Times or Marquee or Midwest DJs Live or Arm DJs or Wedding NBA this year. And I still do believe that it's just that you're making a choice not to. Right. And that's really what it comes down to, because as right. we all know, when life <clears throat> If it's important, you'll make it happen. Right. If it's not important to you, you're not going to make it happen. And, and that's just the way that it is. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. No, I, I do. I, I think um, people, like you said, people will afford what they want to afford, and their bank statement will show you what's important to them. And it uh, could be that, you know, that they see value in something else uh, to help their business. I don't know. Or it's not as uh, a big thing to them. Um, I don't know. Like it's, it could be various different things, but um, I just hope that there's enough people in our industry who want to improve themselves and improve their business, um, especially with a show like Marquee, to be able to, um, you know, make it a good show for them and and for for the industry. You know, because obviously, even I'm gonna t- I'm gonna be a total ambassador and say it's not just even about Marquee. I mean, there are lots of great books and products. Right. And everything else. The thing that always bothers me is, and we see it too often in our DJ bulletin boards, is the people that go, I've never had to do that before. I've never, I've been doing this for X amount of years and I've never attended a show once. I've never had to buy any of the XYZ DVDs or the 69% solutions or the, you know, whatever it is. And my customers love me. Right. I keep thinking it's like, You've probably changed equipment over the years, but you probably haven't changed much else about your business. Right. And so, you know, when I see guys like the 10 or 11 guys that put on Midwest DJs Live, I think they did a great job. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows how hard I'm working to do this. You know, I give props to DJ Times. They have altered some things. They've got a new host hotel. They're announcing a lot of the people that are speaking already, which they never, ever did before. Mm-hmm. So they seem to be stepping up their game. And and I think that we're at a place now where, as I've said in the past, marriage rates in this country are the lowest that they've been in the last hundred years. Competition is higher than it's ever been before. And so now more than ever, you have to, have to, have to, have to uh, step up your game if you are going to compete. And right. I may not agree with everything that that all of the presenters have to say, but to me, educational things like, Midwest Live or Marquee or Mobile Beat or whatever, it's like a buffet. You know, you take what you want and you leave the rest there and and that's it. Yeah. So you totally. have to make sure there's enough there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I, I mean, I think there's a couple of things with those shows, though. I mean, one, you got to keep in mind that, like, if people have – um, well, especially with Marquis may be a good, really good example because that's that's a high end show that is for people who really want to make a huge investment. But the reality is, is that people some people just don't have the budget to do it. Um, no, I, I would love to have a Mercedes. No, no, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you right there. Yeah. It's not that they don't have the budget. It's just that they're choosing to allocate their money in a different place. OK, no, I, I mean, it, it's if you had a thousand dollars for education, right. um, I'm just throwing out a number. OK. Um, you know, you may do it on a couple of different, you know, things like for me, I, it may be, I, Hey, I want to learn how to, um, mix a little bit better. So for me going to a show probably isn't the best place to go learn how to mix better. I might go take a class. 
I'm, I'm, I might go take a class. And on but that. here's the thing. So but I've but right in the title, it says a business conference. Right. So I'm yes, we have performance driven things. And yes, we have specific photo booth tracks, but it really is a business track for growing right. your business. Okay. Right. And and again, I don't say, you know, I have my own personal beliefs about what a business should be or what have you, but I'm not looking at, you know, getting having people get up on stage and say, you need to have a brick and mortar business or you know, you can't use a cell phone or whatever it is. It's not that. I'm just looking to help create content so that people can make a better living. Okay. Right. And here's where it comes down to. We'll use marquee just for numbers because I had a husband and wife team challenge me about how expensive my show was. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm just going to compare it to others from a financial point of view and nothing else. So this past week, it was $150 for a pass at Midwest DJs Live, right? Yep. So that's $75 a day. My show is three days, not two days, which brings it up to $225, okay? Does that sound fair? Yeah. All right. We include a box lunch every single day, and my cost on that is like $33 a person. Right. So you don't have to worry about lunch. So at my cost, that's another 100 So you're talking about $225 plus 100 now puts you at 325 Mm -hmm. There are, if you're an ADJ member, if you follow DJ Idea Share, if you get emails from Promoly, there's lots of discount codes that brings my cost down to $450 instead of um, $500. So yeah. you're talking about a $125 difference. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on where you live, you have to fly in or drive in, but the rooms are $155 a night, single or double occupancy. So you buck up with you bunk up with somebody. So that you can cut down the room. So now you're talking about $75, $80, you know, a night. So you're not talking about a ton of money for a very nice hotel. And again, lunches are included. You know, you can definitely go inexpensive for breakfast. If you are driving in, you can even bring in donuts or bagels or whatever for the week. And again, I'm trying to do this as conservatively as possible. And, you know, again, there's a McDonald's right around the corner from the place. There's Giordano's Pizza. There's a lot of places of doing it. You know, as long as you don't feel like you have to be a baller and try to keep up with the other DJs, there's definitely affordable ways of doing things. So, mm -hmm. so that's that. Um, wow, YouTube is just on fire tonight, huh? Yeah, some good peeps. Yeah. So, um, which brings me to my next thing, totally off topic. But I, as we've talked about, I love the fact that we're live. Absolutely love it. Um, compared to some of the other shows, I love the fact that people are uh, chiming in and giving their two cents and clapping or questioning stuff. And so uh, I love uh, addressing it. So um, you want to go ahead and do you want to take Facebook or do you want me to? You uh, I'll take, take Facebook. Yeah, I'm okay. on there now. We so got, uh, tell me what's going on Facebook. I'll tell you what's going on YouTube. We got Jason Henniger uh, okay. with us. We got Chris Hentz who says, you know, most people want the content for free. And those who have paid for the training and networking aren't going to discern the info for free if you paid for it. Okay. So that's a good comment for sure. Um, yeah. So, uh, so it's just people saying hello primarily. Gotcha. Yeah. Lucas is on board on, uh, on uh, Lucas Alvarez is saying, Hey, and forgive me. I do this every week and I don't know why I can't remember WAB mobile entertainment. He's, he's always terrific. And I can, isn't it William? I, f I keep forgetting. I'm so sorry. Um, Reggie, it was great to meet you in person at Midwest DJs. Yeah, it Live. was. So uh, thankful. Uh, Jody, of course, is our number one fan. And uh, absolutely love you for that. Um, who else do we have here? Bro Lance. <laughs> Bro Lance? That's one of your guys. Yeah, yeah. From Kansas. I'm going to try and do a gig this weekend. So, okay. We already know that. Um, let's see. Who else? We Reggie, Brian, Jody. Just a lot of people talking, 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 talking. So, um, someone back. What do we got here? Okay. Jody wants me to know that she wants the world to know that she hung out with, uh, a bunch of WWE superstars from uh, back in the day. So that's it. But um, yeah, lots of conversation. I thought that there'd be a little bit more. 
So Brolands, I live in Southeast Kansas. Not many events around here. And the drive is not in my cards right now. Okay. Maybe. That's what I'm trying to say is like, I think that sometimes, you know, like I said, with the, with the Mercedes analogy, I mean, I would love to own one. I just can't afford it. And I think that that's just sometimes the reality for some people is that the margins, maybe they're in a market where they're not able to, you know, do some of the, tra- all the training that we, we can do because maybe we're in bigger markets. And so they have to do what they can to, to make it. I mean, when I was first starting out, I couldn't go to shows. I had to pick and choose what I could, what I could do. And when I finally was able to make one, it was, it was one show. It wasn't five. Right. And it definitely wasn't the most expensive show. I had to kind of make it just make it work. And so and yet, here's what's funny. I remember going to DJ times in Chicago cause it was there mm-hmm. falling so in love with it that literally yeah. I got married July 3rd. And I think it was like a week and a half later. Maybe two weeks later, I was on a plane for LA. Right. And that was it. And I went by myself. I didn't bring my wife with. Wow. And it was just, I told her, like, this is such a priority for me. I learned so much. Right. And that was it. And again, and I learned even more. And I learned and I met even more great people there, like Andy Ebon and John Ross. Right. And, totally. And so others that are still in my life. Um, and then in 94, we flew out to Atlantic City. And again, and, and listen, I was living in an apartment, driving a shitty car and, you know, and all of that stuff. But I, I'm telling you, for me, the investment was right. so worth it that I'm sorry. I think that the investment in yourself is the best. Inve- it's far better totally. than buying a bubble machine or getting a new pair of speakers, especially when the old ones are still perfectly usable. You know, they may not be the new Evolve 50s or the new RCFs or the new whatever you want to call it. But again as long as there's nothing wrong with them, right? It, it seems like DJs are dropping tons of money on uplights and projectors and projector stands and all this other stuff without, you know, getting this, the fundamentals that they need to be a great business owner, you know, with sales and marketing tools. So, I agree. But I mean, uh, how many mm-hmm. DJs do you think there are in, in the U S I mean, I've heard this question asked a lot, but um, I've heard the number for North America, we'll call it Canada and right. Uh, that there's somewhere between 100 to 150 thousand. Okay, so out of that number, the amount of people that go to these shows is not even 10 percent. No, absolutely not. Right. So. Right. So I mean, there's. I don't think it's. It's. Uh, there's definitely something different in our. I mean, something going on there where it's 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 a perception kind of situation. I think. Right. Sometimes, I mean, but at the same point in time, the other part of it is this. And I'm not being disparaging about any, but but I've talked to a lot of people that said they don't care for another conference. They think the conference's education is beneath them or mm. they didn't care for the experience. So they assume that all of like them are the same. Are the same and, you know, right. everything's so, the same, that, that there's no reason for them to come to it because unfortunately their experience has been tainted. Right. And, uh, and that's it. So then it's incumbent upon the show producer to make it so different or so compelling that you can't not attend. Right. 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 And again, given props, the guys from Midwest DJs live stepped it up. I mean, the crown plaza uh, at at the airport was a nice hotel, Mm -hmm. but much nicer venue, lots more different things to do. Um, So again, I think that they're consistently stepping it up and yeah, they, they I think word of mouth will get around with them. I mean, I, to be honest, I had never gone to Midwest DJs live out of all right. the shows. That was just one of the ones where I didn't, I ha- I could have afforded to go, but I was going to two or three shows already. Right. And that was just one that, uh, you know, I was like, ah, I can't, I just can't, you know, there's just not enough time that all this other stuff. And, and I'm glad I went this time because, uh, I did get a lot out of it and, right. And, um, I would have sacrificed maybe another show to because this one with the content was just so solid. So I well, think- here was the other interesting thing about this. I would say ninety percent of the people there went to ninety percent of the seminars. Oh, I agree. Whereas this year, when I would say, I mean, John Young had a hard time getting people to do a review of Mobile Beat because most people said they didn't go to more than three or four seminars the entire week, which. I, I don't get that at all. That to me is like the wedding show vendors that are trying to break out 20 minutes early. Right. Like if, if you're, if you're driving or flying all the way to a conference, wherever it may be, mm-hmm. and you're physically there, 
you know, sit your butt down in the chair and struggle through it. You know, and if you're in a, like, I, I have ants in my pants. You'll never see me in the front row ever. I mean, and even yours, when I popped in, I sat down with Mike Walter and I was up front, but, and it's not because I've seen your seminar before. I just, I can't sit. So I, I generally sit in the back of the room where I can right. stand up, stretch my legs, pace a little bit if I have to, because I'm that guy. Sure. So, but, uh, I, I do the same thing at mobile beat. I do the same thing at, uh, at DJ times. I did the same thing at social media examiner. And that's just, I try to be a classroom guy, whereas I'd prefer to take the car apart than ever read the owner's manual and right. back together again. But I acknowledge my weaknesses, which is why I choose to sit in the back of the room. And I, I choose to, to not be a st- distraction to anybody or, or a daydream or what have you. Sure. So, sure. So I get all. you. Yeah. I just, uh, I think it's one of those things where, uh, I wonder if the model is shifting to more of these, like, cause even pro mobile out in England, um, there was a hundred and I mean, that room could only hold, uh, about a hundred and so, or so people and it was packed. Everybody was in there. So I'm wondering if it's sh- even shifting from those big, it's kind of like when the nightclubs have gone from these huge mega clubs to like these smaller lounges and whatnot. I'm right. wondering if it's a similar shift with, with, with education and how you're learning If the, the, the big shows are kind of dying. Um, because that's been the trend, right? I mean, um, the other shows but like the, the Expo. Is, and- but let's look at it differently. Are they dying because they're like Toys R Us and they didn't adapt? Because let's face it, mm-hmm. you, you take a, st- like using the Toy Store analogy, you turn around and you look at uh, a company like uh, Build-A-Bear. Um, hang on one second. Oops, sorry. I refreshed my screen and all of a sudden I had uh, myself in, in the... Uh, in my headphones. Um, are they just not adapting? You know, right. cause let's face it, American girl doll, that's significantly more expensive than any other doll that you're looking at. Yeah. But, you know? but look at the care that's provided there. When you I, go in, disagreeing. When they, you go in there. That's not a matter of a, of, of um, evolving with the times. That's just a matter of care. It's, it's a niche product. It's one thing and they're doing it right. And that they've always done it. It's not like they've just all of a sudden, ah, Hey, well, let's turn on the spigot for care all of a sudden and evolved with it. That's the way that their brand has always been from the beginning. No, I get that, but let's use a different brand. Let's look at somebody like Amazon. That's again, mm-hmm. consistently evolving to be ahead of the curve and things like that. And, you know, it, it seems like so many of these conferences are doing the same things over and over again. And again, yeah. I'm not besmirching anybody, but you know, Mobile Beats had vanilla ice twice now in 20 years. Like, right. is that, you know, is it even necessary? I, mm-hmm. I mean, th- that's the real question. <clears throat> is it just that we're, people are doing the same thing over and over and over again. And even at DJ Times, we're seeing a lot of the same people speaking. And right. and even a lot of these conferences, you know, you're a great presenter. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Mike Walters and Randy Bartlett is. But the question being is, is it going to be the three of you at every conference across America for the next however many years or whatever yeah. it may be? So, and that's why, again, my conference is, I'm choosing to make it different. Because right. No, I absolutely. People outside of the industry. And so yeah. I could be right. It could be wrong. I mean, rea- realistically, Randy Bartlett's video so far has had the most amount of traction. So I don't know if it's just a certain amount of familiarity or, Definitely, I think or it's part of that. <clears throat> Going to so. be a little bit of that for sure, and you know, I think it could also be a situation where you know the the buzz. You're a first year show, so I, I don't think you have much, um, you know, I don't want to say street cred yet, but well, yeah. uh, but but it could be something where it goes so well, similar to how Midwest DJs uh, just got such a rave review from, from so many people who went that I think it might just kind of catch traction and some momentum that way. So it could be something where people go, man, you missed out on this show and it could be those people become your brand ambassadors. You know what I mean? No, I I totally agree. And listen, there were so many people, it was like a little family reunion for a lot of them. And I understand that's the way arm DJs is. And and, right. you know, and I think to a degree, that's why we all go to shows, because we know that our peer group's going to be there and we yeah. get to have dinner with people that we don't get to see and things along those lines. So, sure. So that's that. And then there's the opposite. I mean, I talked to you more on this show and on the phone. I saw you for four seconds at the show 
Yeah. You know, and <laughs> like it. was it. So, yeah. yeah. So again, it's, it's, uh, it's a dynamics, but it, again, wherever you're getting your education, my suggestion is that you keep getting it. And that's, oh, I'm a firm believer uh, with you. I agree that, with you hundred percent, you know, hundred percent. You got It's like, uh, and I think it was Randy Bartlett that said it, um, you know, do you have 21 years experience or have you been doing the same show for the same wedding for 21 years? Yeah. You know, recently I just had somebody who had, they had left a venue and I said, Oh, you're not going to be working for blah, blah, blah anymore. And she said, you know, blah, blah, blah is really nice, but she does the same wedding every single solitary weekend. Right. What? She goes, she talks brides and groom into having the cake in the same place and timing it the same way. And she said, there's literally no creativity there. Blah, blah, blah. Knows what she likes, knows how she wants to run it, gets annoyed when anybody wants to do something different. And that's that. She goes, I couldn't take it anymore. She goes, I literally... I couldn't take it anymore. I had to, I had to get out. Hmm. And I mean, and I believe if you're not growing, you're dying. I mean, even look at the, and I think it's uninformed controversy about the, the boy scouts right now. Right. You know, I I've heard so many people bitching and moaning about the boy scouts. Why are girls? And I've heard all these rumors that it's because women's groups were demanding to be a part of it. And then I finally um, saw a press release where the the people from the Boy Scouts did like a, a video and they said, here's the deal. We are trying to be much more accommodating to families. And so if we can have an organization that is more inviting for families to get involved, to get parents to be involved with their kids in a scouting thing, whether they're a girl or a boy, we just want families involved. And they said that their data shows that Asian families and Hispanic families want to do things together. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thinking like, okay, here's a, here's a time honored tradition. Okay. That, that uh, scouts have been around for hundreds of years and they're evolving. Right. You know, and again, some people are going to be upset because of the fact that it's changing and it's not what they remember. And they wanted it exactly the way that it was for their kids. And you know, that's that, but listen, you know, we're not driving 1950 Chevys and listening to AM radio and, you know, things evolve. That's just the way that it goes. Agreed. Agreed. Or it dies. You right. know, and you know, Toys R Us is an example of a dying brand. Because again, I don't think they evolved on the internet. They didn't evolve in creating a unique shopping experience. It was just a store with a lot of toys in it, and that was it. Mm-hmm. So so the question that you have to ask yourself as a as a business owner is, you know. If you own Acme Widget DJ Entertainment Service, are you evolving or are you dying? You know, and buying up lights doesn't mean you're evolving. Right. Right. Buying a projector and doing a a monogram doesn't mean it because as we're starting to find out, more and more people are just throwing it in in an effort to get the gig. Right. Okay. The gig as opposed to uh, as opposed to increasing the quality of their service. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, if I had to give some people some takeaways, I mean, I think you you need to evaluate your business. You should be doing that on an ongoing basis and just kind of deciding what are some areas you want to improve. And hopefully you're always wanting to improve and not be just kind of maintaining. I wouldn't think anybody would get into this business to just, you know, coast. At least I would hope not. So right. by evaluating those things, seeing what you need to get better at, um, you know, I think you can make the right decision as to what particular show or education piece helps your business grow in that regard. Right. Um, so by not doing anything, you're, you're, if you're just staying status quo, someone's getting ahead of you. And right. I think no we, all want, it. we all want to, you know, grow, I would think at some point, maybe not just with our skill set, but just our business in general with dollars and cents. And so, sure. Um, I would hope that if I can give any advice, I would definitely, encourage you to, um, you know, be, be looking at at least one way to improve every year in some, some area of your business. Um, so speaking of that, I mean, what, what, what would be some areas for you? What have you looked to improve in this year? What are you trying to get better Um, at and what are you looking for at shows for yourself? What are, what are some things that you're trying to, for me, I'll tell you, one of my biggest things right now is, uh, SEO. That's, and I know that could be a, that's going to be an ever changing thing, but 
you know, as I was searching the internet, looking for Chicago based DJs to make sure that every single solitary Chicago area DJ was on my mailing list to find out about Marquee, I realized, and, and I'm call it humble, stupid enough, whatever you want to do to say this. I wasn't on the first 10 pages under hmm. Chicago wedding DJ or Chicago disc jockey service. I wasn't on the first 10 pages. And my brother happens to be my webmaster. And I called him up and I said, dude, what's going on? He goes, if you remember, I told you, I'll do all the graphic design, but all the SEO is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I remembered it. And so I, about three weeks ago, I spent like an entire Sunday watching tutorials on Yoast, on SEO, right? On all of it. Um, the, the bottom line is like, I realized I hadn't done anything. Mm -hmm. So I did so much learning on it. And again, I'll be honest, if there was a, if I could go to a workshop that I knew had some sort of street cred or, or anything, I right. wouldn't think twice about it. I spent $1,500 going to social media examiner. And again, the problem I see is there's a couple of people who have been there and now they have put the DJ spin on it and they're saying the same thing again. It's sometimes I think it's the old adage, those that don't, those, those that don't teach. And then there's the other half that they use their experience, you know, to, they use their successes to teach others to be successful. And mm -hmm. that's that. And I try to be more of the second than the first for whatever limited success I happen to have. I sure. think Mark Walter's a perfect example. He's not, you know, he's not teaching you what he read in a book. He's telling you, this is what he's had experience with. This is how he's grown his multi-op and so on and so forth. Right. So, right. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, what did I say? Somebody had a, a really good point on here and I forgot. Oh, your event matters entertainment. That's exactly right. And how it should be organized. Unfortunately, it does seem that shows are recycled with no innovation. Um, and again, the, the only thing I'll say in defense of that is certain things like sales, sales are sales to a degree. And yes, it's evolving because selling to a millennial is a lot different, significantly different than it was, let's say, selling to my generation and your, how old are I'm you a, again? I'm a tweener. Okay. I'm, in, I'm between the uh, Gen X and the millennial. Gotcha. How old are you then? You can just uh, Right at 40. Okay. So you're eight years younger than me. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was coming up, we were trying to sell ourselves as just being legit. I right. mean, back in my day, just we had to prove that we would actually show up that we would actually have the music, you know, a decent music collection that we had equipment, you know, and, and that's just the way that it is today. Millennials all believe that everybody's going to show up and everybody's going to do a good job. So now you have to sell yourselves as being different and unique and selling a different, I mean, more than anything, I think you have to sell the experience now and you have to do it in a very convenient way because mm -hmm. again, they're, they're shopping differently. Right. You know, so right. it could be that you're going to have to start Skyping with people or creating some sort of a product that you can do online where you can physically show them, you know, kind of like a webinar type of a thing, an interactive webinar. Because yeah. Again, they're used to shopping online. They're used to buying it in the convenience of their own home. They're used to getting that. So again, that's probably going to be the future for a lot of, uh, a lot of things. You know, I think that, flowers they still want to come in and see it feel it touch it i think that um i think the dresses obviously are going to be that way although we just pick up kleinfeld's bridal party so you can order your bridal party dresses online they'll right. ship it to you if it doesn't fit right if you don't like it you can ship it back and and that's it right so, you know, and are you familiar with Rent the Runway at all? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know what Rent the Runway is, um, they have designer dresses for rental and you can get it. What is it like? It's like two weeks before or something along those lines. So if you're going to a gala um, and you want to have a gorgeous black dress, you can go online, pick it out, pick your size. They ship it to you. You try it on, you wear it for the gala, you ship it back very similar to a tuxedo. 
There's another one too for the wedding market um, called Vow to Be Chic. Okay. Out of LA. All right. They they do this for bridesmaids dresses because right. how many bridesmaids buy a dress that they can only wear for that one wedding? You know, right. it's like, and if you're in a lot of them, I mean, you got a lot of dresses just sitting in your closet that you wore one time. So they have sure. these um, really wearable dresses that are beyond just uh, like they can be used for more than just weddings and they're rentable out of LA, like 10,000 different styles. So this is becoming a definitely a big trend of right. that kind of style of retail as far as clothing goes, right. for sure. And there's but, no yeah. question that online is it. So mm -hmm. the the wedding segment, the, the wedding industry is definitely going to go that way. So yeah. Uh, um, your event matter says that the lighting symposium has been my favorite show. The content may be similar to previous years, but the experience gained at the casual workshops and enjoying Minnesota together as a group sharing stories. Well, there's nothing else to do in Minnesota but share stories. I mean, <laughs> you've got uh, you take away Prince's legacy there, and you've just got a bunch of lakes. So unless you're into fishing, there's just nothing there. But again, it's one of those small shows that uh, these small. I'm, I think it's definitely something to be. We need to be looking at and seeing if this is going to be something that will be trending this way. But there's a lot more of these small little get-togethers happening than that we even realize. Right. Uh, there was an audio symposium recently. Uh, that was the same time as lighting symposium. Same well, week. there was another or mix symposium. Was it that what okay. it was? The yeah, Jamie thing? Bodie put it on. Yeah. So all yep. these little get-togethers are happening over and over. Uh, it seems like, and they're well attended. I mean, but for I what they are, that, that could be because again, the current show promoters mm -hmm. are not listening to right um, to the needs of their of their people, right? So of their attendees, right? So I mean, right. th that's all. I mean, again, most people I talk to, why are you going to Mobile Beat? Well, it's in Vegas, so it's always a good time. And again, and I'm not knocking mobile bait, and, and please don't take it that way because it's not what it's designed to. Right. When people are going to three and four seminars and not doing anything else, and then I look at 95% of the people going to the ones in Milwaukee, it isn't that the Midwest people are so thirsty for knowledge and everybody that went to Vegas is so genius. It just, again, I think it's a different presentation and, and, uh, I don't necessarily think that everybody is thinking it all the way through. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Jody's screaming survey, survey, survey. So, yeah, and, you know, and I agree, but, but even that, cause I know I've gotten surveys from DJ times before about what I like and I don't like, and yet there seem to be doing most of the same show year after year after year after year. And they definitely have their, their strengths and their weaknesses. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Reggie Kemp says, Dave, Jared, Jeremy, Brian, Casey, Brian, B, Drex, Shaney, I thought was cool. They're all open to meeting, saying hello and shaking your hand. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you in person as well, Reggie, especially after I called you a cheap bastard last weekend on the air. So that was that. <laughs> so I wasn't at that one. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, no, you weren't. So I barely was too. Which, yeah, apparently. Uh, yeah, that was kind of out there. So, but again, I, I guess the, the theme isn't, and please people, I know that Marquee is my passion and my lifeblood right now. So I don't want you to think this is an infomercial for that. I believe in education. I really sincerely, sincerely do. You know, I was listening to Mike Walter's podcast today as I was having dinner, um, you know, and he was talking about how they deal with an unhappy customer and you know and those are some of the challenges and and it's a great topic because let's face it when everything goes great you know life is good the measure of a business is when they make a mistake and let me tell right. you i've had to deal with comcast this week and you use time warner cable in your example and i mm -hmm. forgot what was the joke um how can we ruin your day today or yeah. yeah yeah something like that yeah Okay. And Ruin your life. Example. Let me here. Here's my notes. I can't. Let's see if it'll focus in. They've been overbilling me for three years now. 30 bucks, right? $29.99. I called on April 9th to say, hey, I just noticed this billing indiscrepancy. They didn't do anything about it. Like they said that they would, they didn't. I had to call on the 16th, then on the 19th, then on the 24th. Then on the 30th, which was the Monday of Midwest DJs Live, 
I got a phone call from my office saying that the internet and the TV was a temp was on a soft disconnect for non-payment. Okay. When they had all told me that I'd be getting a credit of $1,100, but I was in the rears $300 and I was forced to pay the bill to get internet back on. I demanded, I spent an hour on the phone with them on, on that uh, Monday in the empty uh, private bank uh, conference room talking to a guy who was supposed to call me back that night between five and eight, wound up calling me at 10 to nine. Then I told him, I told you I couldn't make it when you wanted me to. You asked me what time I could call. You missed the window by an hour. Call me tomorrow before nine. He never called. That was Tuesday. It's now Thursday. I had to call again. And the best part is they told me it's going to be two billing cycles before I'd see my credit. Now oh, yeah. I could buy a car and return it to a dealership and have less problems and paperwork than what I have with Comcast. Right. Absolutely ridiculous. So again, the lesson that I learned today again with Mike Walter is it's, you know, how do you deal with an upset customer? So, so mm. that's that. Yeah, definitely. Berlance, when you stop learning, you start dying. Yeah. Like I said earlier, if you're not growing, you're dying. So what do you have going on on Facebook? Uh, a lot of the same kind of commentary as far okay. as that stuff goes. Um, uh, people mm-hmm. just weighing in on, on, uh, on the show stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what's on your calendar this year? Like, you know, you asked me. Where yeah. I'm looking, I told you SEO, and mm-hmm. uh, I've gone back to blogging very, very regularly. So if you want to, you can. I mean, on Marquee, I blog all the time, right? You know, and I don't know if you saw it because I even posted a blog about it. Uh, sure, microphone has stopped manufacturing needles, actually right. all phono products whatsoever. Mm. And what's really interesting about that at the same point in time, Ortofone is putting out yet a new cartridge. So right. again, if you're not growing, you're dying. So, because mm-hmm. I don't think that sure has put out anything new in what twenty years, right? Somewhere in that right. neighborhood. So yeah. maybe that's, maybe that's the reason why they're going out of the needle business is because people aren't buying the sure needles anymore. Probably. So yeah, yeah. For me, I'm uh, I've got two things I'm working on for the last year or so. It feels like the uh, in the upper echelon market the bands have made a resurgence over DJs for right. whatever reason. And so we have found um, in our Florida office and then even in the New York office, like there's just this huge shift towards bands okay. or hybrid bands. I think you got Adam speaking on this topic. Yeah, we do. Um, so th- th- for people who don't do it, how to fight against that or how to show worth outside of that, or it's, it's just, it's a perception thing. And, um, so we're, 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 I'm trying to deal with that particular topic, which isn't something that like, uh, you know, I expect there to be a seminar on necessarily, but it's, 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 I guess the, the gist is when there's a downturn, how do you, how do you snap around that and still show value for what you can bring to the table and, and show worth? You, you know, it's kind of like adjusting <laughs> to what's happening in the market and, and figuring right. out your, your spot. So um, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's not really necessarily a topic I'm looking for, but I'm just telling you kind of one of my challenges that I'm, I'm dealing with okay. right now that I need to figure out. Hopefully someone will speak to something of that um, and I can catch some kind of differentiator. Got as far it. as that goes. And then, um, you know, something else I'm working on is um, it's a staffing situation of dealing with a general manager and how to compensate for that particular position um, when it's not something that in our area, especially in the Florida area, that we ever, there's not another company like us that has that right. kind of a position. Okay. So trying to figure out how to structure that salary slash you know, management position Got in a it. way where the business doesn't go under because of it, because we still need that position, Got but it's it. not me doing it. So staffing, I guess that staffing kind of topic is what I'm looking for sure. uh, in that regard. But again, it's, it's, it's not, it's like a level two or one or three or one kind of topic. Now, would you ever go to like an Anthony Robbins uh, business mastery class? Um, would I go to one? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. So maybe again, you have to reach out by beyond the DJ industry. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. Absolutely. I've been I mean, to his personal development courses and I've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So I've done the fire walk and, you know, sure. on hot coals and the whole thing and, and definitely enjoyed it and right. have always put the business mastery on my bucket list. And, uh, you know, and again, I think that no disrespect to the DJ industry at all, because I'm knee deep in it. But right. I think if you want to, at some point in time, you it's May of your senior year from an educational point of view. And now you have to go on to at least junior college or senior, you know, or totally. Totally. University and go from there. So. Yeah. Agreed. So I'm yeah. just trying to figure out like um, for, for me, I, 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 I tend to kind of gravitate towards mentors or people that are outside okay. of our industry anyway. Right. Um, just to kind of get a fresh perspective. I think it's, I was saying in my talk at Midwest DJs live that I always like to pull principles instead of a playbook. Okay. Um, and I think that that allows me to create something for myself that fits my company's DNA rather than cloning myself of another DJ company. Um, and let's face it, our industry is a lot of follow the leader. It is. Yeah. yeah. So, and, I, mean, and I will say that was one of the things that was kind of cool about Midwest DJs Live this year is there was, I can't remember what the, it was a buzzword that um, everybody at Midwest DJs Live was using, but this type of learning where you share things with your fellow. Uh, listeners or attendees, I should say, right. and hope and hopefully generate some ideas that way in conversation, which I thought was an interesting way to 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 run a conference. Because usually yeah. it's like the speaker speaking, everybody's taking in, and this was more the speakers posing situations or questions that they want you to discuss and hopefully share out some ideas. You know, what yeah, I mean? a little more workshop orientated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so let me ask you, cause Jody just brought up something. Influencer marketing is something that she'd love to be better at. So if you would think, and let's say in your market, is there someone like, do you think if Martha Stewart saw you at an event and said you were unbelievable and she would have put a, a tweet out, you think it would change your world? Yeah. Okay. Do you? Martha, if you're watching, you know, Yeah. I, I don't know. You know what? Cause here's the thing. I don't know in today's day and age with the millennial bride. I mean, look what happened. Kylie Jenner tweeted that Facebook or that, that uh, Snapchat is over and it cost Snapchat at least temporarily $1.2 billion. Right. You know, at the same point in time, there's lots of people saying Facebook is over, but you have 2.1, you have 2.13 billion monthly users on it so even though people are like even my nephew 17 he's on facebook he's just not utilizing it the same way that he utilizes snapchat so sure. and truthfully that's where he winds up you know he winds up uh uh connecting with me via messenger more so than ever picking up the phone right so so that's that um but um Again, you know, I, I think that, again, especially with the saturation point, especially with uh, with so many different things going on in the world and it, and it changing so quickly that I think you if you're going to be a leader, meaning I shouldn't even say a leader, if you're going to be a driving force within your marketplace, you have to have to have to keep getting education or you're going to be left behind. You're going to be yeah. the horse and buggy, you know, the horse and buggy uh, business. Right, right. So, yeah, I, I, I agree 100% with that. Yeah, so so that's where I, you seem a little bored tonight. Are you, are you still, uh, are you jet lagged? No, no, I'm not bored at all. No, I okay. think this is good. This is good combo for sure. Um, I think it's it's timely too because it, uh, we're getting towards the, what, the halfway point of the year. And um, I know for me, I like to look at what did I do in the first half? What worked? What didn't? And kind of make this is like where I'm making my my adjustments for the second half, got it. if you will. Right. So um, well, that's the other part that people got to be careful about because everyone says the first part of it's the booking season, and now mm -hmm. it's the performing season, but it's not. It's the performing and booking season. Yeah. So oh, you have to be multitasking. You have to make your sales goals still, and you have to make your performance goals. So right. there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah. So, yeah. And with that said, I mean, there's only what two or three more shows left in the year for you to be able to grab that education and grab that kind of content before 
Uh, you got to wait another six months. So correct. Um, well, there's lots happening in the summer now because Arm DJs is going on, and is that it, happening? I like. I feel well, like I haven't heard I think, much. I haven't heard much either. I know that Allen Berg is going down there. So if you're down south and it's convenient, I'd recommend you go see Alan, if nothing else. I, I don't know who else is speaking, so I can't really say. Yeah. Um, John just popped on saying, yes, Arm DJs is indeed happening. Um, and that's June. And then July is Marquee. August is DJ Times. September and October are quiet. Uh, first week of November is uh, Wedding NBA, which is also one of my favorite shows. And then we're done for the year unless you're a, a lighting guy and you want to go to LDI in November, or if you're into alternative stuff, you could go to IAPA and get yourself a giant bounce house or, you know, maybe some other photo novelty type stuff or what have you. But, um, but for education, you're really down to, you know, a few shows. Three or four. Yeah, yeah. So, and um, social media examiner already happened in March. So that's done. And again, I'm sure there's podcasting um, seminar workshops and and other types of things all over the place. But, you know, again, one of the things that I've focused Marquee on is really specifically um, gearing it toward the business side of the business. Right. 21 seminars, five are DJ specific, five are um, photo booth specific, and 11 of them are business specific. So, which is what you're going to be talking on, which right, you will reveal as we get closer. Yes. So, so yes. That's that. So, is there um, any other specials or any uh, like what what can people know about Marquee as far as getting tickets and things like that? Well, they can go to marqueeshow.com. Mm-hmm. If they're you know, if you look around various Facebook groups, you can save fifty dollars by using different promo codes, including one from. Disc Jockey News. So if you aren't opt in to Disc Jockey News or if you're not getting their publication, you definitely should. Right. Because it's like 20. Wait, hang on. I just had it here. It is. <laughs> hang on. Oh, I almost dumped something. Okay. So it is $30 for 12 issues, which what does that come out to? Like $2 an issue? $2.50 an issue? Yeah, I mean, my God, there's there's it, there's amazing content in there, even though somebody's article was missing this month, and I'm not gonna say yeah, who. yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna say who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's okay. I'm I've worked my way up to page five for the month, so right. So that's right. that. But no, I mean, it's I think absolutely. I made enough chatter out of the last two articles to to last yeah. me at least. A, oh, that's true. You are the uh, you are the headline maker. You yeah. Know, so. <laughs> I mean, take that, Mike Walter or Tara yeah. or uh, Brian Thread. So, so that's that. But yeah, yeah I was able to uh, to get mine in, and I've actually reposted it on the Marquee Show blog that I I shared all over the place, which was essentially about Facebook or about posting on social media in general. So, right. I would recommend if you uh, if you absolutely positively are not going to go to Disc Jockey News, if you go to Marquee Show and click on News and Events, you'll find it. It was posted actually today. So really, okay. Yeah, it was posted today. So that was that. So again, um, it's a nine oh four, which means John's gonna be popping in any second to kick us off the air. So yeah. Brian, it's yeah. great seeing you this week. Absolutely, it's great seeing you every Thursday. Yep. Next Thursday, you're with us. Yes, you're I not am. in like yep. Siberia or God knows nope. where. I'm back, back in, back in black. There's no, you're not doing like the North Korea, South Korea wall Summit. coming down uh, celebration. I mean, it, if it pays, I may. Okay. We'll see. Well, see if go. I get a ticket. Yeah. All right. So for everybody watching, we appreciate you. it. Please get the word out. We don't Share. have any fancy texting things like Joe and Mike do. You just, but you get to see us live. The good, the bad, or the indifferent. You know, that was the one thing that, again, it was a little weird. I listened to Mike's podcast, which he recorded last Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about coming to Midwest DJs Live, so we we brought it to you live. You got to get the feedback from an exhibitor, a sponsor, and uh, and one of the the presenters, the international touring presenter. <laughs> so uh, so that's that. So everybody that's tuned in, I'm going to say thank you again so much. Please uh, go to MarqueeShow.com, get your tickets because I really need your money. <laughs> and uh, that's it. All right. So thank you all for tuning in. Good night. God bless.
Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, Newmark. and DJ and TV Insider.